The doors to the Verde and Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone, I'm back from vacation and taking extra days off to kind of recuperate from the vacation. Uh, so my boyfriend and I went to Pagosa Springs in South Southern Colorado and uh, what a treat. The, the drive down was amazing, actually getting to Pagosa Springs, it's very much a resort town. I mean, that, that you're there for the springs and the beautiful nature surrounding it, but you're there for the springs. And I took pictures of several of the little pools that we either got in and soaked or tried to soak or be like, that's way too hot. Like there was one called Lobster Pot. And I think one day it was like 110 degrees and then another one, it was 107. I was able to get my foot in it for like not even a minute. And my boyfriend was able to sit down for less than a minute, but overall had an absolute blast and got to go to some really cool used bookstores, picked up a plethora of books where I was like, oh my gosh, I've been looking for that. Oh my gosh, I've been looking for that. And got to enjoy some really amazing food. And actually, I'm going to put all of this into a sort of travel essay on my blog, Eccentric Tea Woman. So if you are ready to be <laughs> invited into Pagosa Springs and all things Southern Colorado, then check it out. And I'll actually put my blog's link up on the video once this is done uploading. So yeah, I mean, now for those of you who don't know, Eccentric Tea Woman is where I write adventures with my tea muse and now muses since I have a violin muse. It's also where I write some poetry, where I also do a flash of jazz, which is usually a flash story that was inspired by jazz or I'm listening to jazz while I'm writing it. And then finally, um, some little odds and ends, like talking about different bookstores, libraries, that kind of thing. And there was one other, oh yeah, and my lessons learned, where I, I continuously eat big slices of crow pie. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll upload the link and hopefully by then the travel log about Pagosa Springs will be up and you can read it to your heart's content. And who knows, you might be inspired to check out the springs as they call it. But to all the people who that I met in Pagosa Springs, Durango, Mesa Verde, all of it, just thank you so much. I, I had a wonderful time, so wonderful that I needed two days to recover from it. All right, so I've got some books, some tea, so if you're ready, let's begin. So I do wanna give a shout out to Inglewood Library for this one particular book. It is called Eastbound by Melis de Carangal. And let me just read, uh, let's see, I'll read the inside of it for you. Packed on a trans-Siberian train along with other Russian conscripts, Alyosha is racing towards Vladivostok. Soon after he boards, he decides to desert. Over a midnight smoke in a dark train corridor, the young soldier encounters an older French woman, Hélène. Feeling an uncanny trust, he seeks her help. As they, as they hurry from the filth of his third-class carriage to Hélène's first-class sleeping car, Aleosha becomes a hunted deserter and Hélène his accomplice with her own memories and pain. In Jessica Moore's brilliant translation, Eastbound is both an adventure story and a duet of inner conflict. De Carangal brings together two human beings at critical junctures in their lives as they contend with their own doubts. A symphony of human connection. And about Melis. Melis de Carangal connects the heart with the mind. Her naissance d'un pont, birth of a bridge, won the Prix France SL and the Prix Medici in 2010. The Heart was named one of Wall Street Journal's 10 Best Fiction Works of 2016 and received the 2017 Welcome Book Prize. And The Cook was a New York Times Book Review Editor's Choice. So yeah, this, this, this little novel packed quite a punch. It, it was, you know, I, I've described some books as being quiet. This was quietly unsettling because especially when Alio, Aliosha, I hope I'm Aliosha, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but when the Russian meets the French woman and they're trying to 
communicate with each other and it, it's it's like okay we're having to we're having to do sign language and and it's like no this way smoke yes but uh quietly unsettling very it just very very unsettling i'm not going to give away the ending but uh this little book packed a punch and it, it i felt as though i was on the train myself and just kind of reading reading a book, minding my own business, and then suddenly these two characters kind of capture my eye and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what's going on. I think I need to write this down in my journal. September the 8th, I'm watching, <laughs> but no, I, I this was an author I'd never heard of before. And I, I've said this time and time again, I love going to libraries with no book list where I just walk along a wall, walk in a section, and I'm like, oh, that looks interesting. Sometimes it turns out to be a dud, and well, a dud for me. Other people may enjoy it. And then sometimes you read a book and you're like, I want to read everything this author's ever written. And there is another author that I'll be talking about in the weeks to come who's from Turkey, who lives in France. And I actually reached out to her and I said, I'm in love with your words. I'm in love with how you write. I, I, I'm thinking I will read anything this woman will write in the future. And Melis de Kalingal is another author that I will truly, truly check treasure. And I did notice that the one particular branch of Denver Public Library that I visit has all of her books. So I'm totally looking forward to checking them out in the not too distant future. I, I'm actually taking a break from checking out library books because I really wanna get back into reading uh, my friend's books. And I was going through my library and I thought, my God, you know, I don't even remember this story. So I'm gonna be rereading a lot of indie author books and just reconnecting with the stories and saying, oh yeah, I remember. Now I know why I love this book, but Eastbound by Melis de Calangal. Very unsettling. It keeps you on your edge. You wonder, is this really happening? Are they really going to get away with it? And like I said, I'm not going to. I'm not going to give. Going to give away the ending. You just have to read it for yourself. But it does receive from Viridian Tea House five pots of deliciously unsettling tea. <laughs> I, I truly, truly enjoyed this book. And actually, Lauren Elkin on the back says, I read Eastbound very quickly, and then again, very slowly. It is a novel that is at once propulsive and meditative. There is no typical, this is no typical train journey. It is a heightened evocation of the way unexpected encounters in such settings can call into question who we thought we were, what we thought we were capable of, and what we expect of others. Eastbound reveals the train to be an ethical philosophical laboratory. And she's right. It had some aspects of philosophy especially dealing with the two characters and what they were running away from and what they were possibly running toward. I did question a lot. Um, it made me think. I, I like it when I, I love books that give me, you know, a great ride, but then I also love books where I can sit down and just contemplate and think and wonder and, and, Pose the questions to myself. But yes, Eastbound by Melis de Calangal. Excellent read. And actually, I read a piece that she wrote in a book called A Tower in Tuscany. And it's about this once crumbling house, uh, manor or whatever in Tuscany, that this couple bought for, I think, little of nothing. And they turned it into not only their home, but also kind of like this retreat for creative people, mostly writers. And so the book is composed of different photographs of the different rooms, the artwork that's in each of the rooms. And um, she, I think it's a she, was one of the, well, this particular author was one of the contributors. 
And I was like, oh, I recognize her name. She wrote that book Eastbound. So yeah, if you happen to see, I think it's called A Tower in Tuscany. It's a big kind of coffee table book. Do yourself a favor and read it, honestly. Just read it. So the second book for today is one that I've been wanting to read for quite some time. And I actually found out about it through the deck of cards that it's affiliated with. And this is Literary Witches by Tasia Kite, Kite. Oh my goodness. I'm going to try. If I butcher it, I'm so sorry. Kiteskaya. Kiteskaya. And illustrated by Katie Horan. So this is basically a celebration of magical women writers. And let's see. So the authors in question. Um, let's see, we got Emily Bronte, Octavia Butler, Shirley Jackson, Eileen Chang, Sylvia Plath, Toni Morrison, Anna Akhmatova, Joy Haryo, Flannery O'Connor, Sappho, Faru Faroxad, Emily Dickinson, Audre Lorde, Angela Carter, Virginia Woolf, Sandra Cisneros, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, Jamaica Kincaid, and Carson, Leslie Marmon Silko, Alejandra Pisarnik, Merabai, Anais Nin, Gertrude Stein, Yumiko Kura, Kurahashi, Ag Agatha Christie, Janet Frame, Maria Sabina, Mary Shelley, and Zora Neale Hurston. What a collection. I love this book because it takes these real women, either alive or dead, and each one is a witch. Each one has a certain kind of power. And then it goes into the works of the author and most notable works, most infamous works, banned works, whatever. So I'll give you an example. Uh, let's see here. Let's do, who's one of my favorites? Uh, oh, here we go. Charlotte Perkins Gilman. She's one of my favorites. So 73. Yeah, here we go. Charlotte Perkins Gilman, American powerhouse of feminism, socialism, and fiction. 1860 to 1935. And so each piece is one page and then there's a lovely, magical, witchy illustration to go with it. So for Charlotte Perkins Gilman, soothsayer of utopias, creeping women in evil wallpaper. Turn of the century American photographs show an odd pattern. A mother listens to an invisible speaker by the fireplace. A wife, shopping, holds an orange to her ear. Three women gather in the park to stare at nothing, or is that a flicker of light? In each photo, it is Charlotte, the unseen fairy, the, who holds the women's attention, whispering the changes to come. The day Charlotte begins her career is the day she notices the drawing room wallpaper. It looks uncomfortable and itchy, like someone trapped in a wool sweater. So she peels the paper off in big strips. A secret mural is revealed, depicting a land of abundant fruit, clean cities, nourished children, men and women working alongside one another. The wall exhales a sigh of relief. Charlotte learns early on that she has magic powers. She has only to wave her wand and societies will right themselves. All will be as she envisions. But she tucks the wand away in her pocket and practices an upcoming speech instead. The people must realize the changes for themselves. And then it goes on to, Charlotte Perkins Gilman is best known for The Yellow Wallpaper, a story inspired by the disastrous sexist rest cure prescribed for her postpartum depression. In her day, Gilman was also famous as a social critic, giving popular lectures on economic and social reform and for her unconventional life choices. Her utopian novels and nonfiction are worth revisiting for their visions of a cooperative society and the place of gender roles in economics. Recommended reading, Essential Tales, The Yellow Wallpaper, When I Was a Witch. Best of the feminist utopian novels, Her Land, which was absolutely incredible and nonfiction classic women and economics so that's just an example of the many literary witches in this book but i tell you something as i read this book i think i knew about 70 percent of the authors i'd only read about 50 percent of them and i said you know what i'm gonna change that i want to read 
at least a book or a poem or a short story by all of these authors. It may take me a while, but I want to do it. I want to do it. But yeah, like with Charlotte Perkins Gilman, I read The Yellow Wallpaper. I think I've read it like three or four times and each time it's just chilling. It really is. And Herland was quite the sci-fi novel, really was. But yeah, so for Literary Witches, A Celebration of Magical Women Writers, it receives Viridian Tea House's Five Pots of Kick-Ass Witchy Tea. I truly enjoyed reading this book. I, I really did. And like I said, I have plans to try and read at least one piece, one, one piece from each author. And actually in the preface, let's see. Why would we dare call someone a literary witch? Because all artists are magicians and witches wield a special magic. Witches and women writers alike dwell in creativity, mystery, and other worlds. They aren't afraid to be alone in the woods of their imaginations or to live in huts of their own making. They're not afraid of the dark. As such, the mantle of literary witch is the highest honor we can bestow upon an author. The 30 writers included here inspire us deeply, urging us to be creative, cre creatively courageous. We've crafted their portraits and art and in writing to pay homage to their presence and to access their spirits through, through our own mediums. Due to time, space, and seniority, long practicing witches must be noted before newly initiated witches. The authors that follow make up only a single shelf of our role model library. It's true. We hope that you will celebrate them with us, read their works, and go out to create your own canon of literary witches. Couldn't say it better myself. I, honestly, I could not have said it better myself. And you know, actually I'm thinking about it and I'm like, you know, I kind of want to create my own section of literary witches. Uh, you know, I'm, there are so many authors that I've met throughout the years and each one has their own magic with words. So yeah, I think I want to do that. But yes, literary witches is an amazing, amazing homage to these women. And uh, I'm glad that they are bestowed the title of literary witch. They deserve it. They really do. Right, so getting to the tea portion. I am reviewing a new tea today. I picked this tea up uh, in, oh, what is it? It's, oh goodness. I forgot how to pronounce the name of the town. But as we were driving to uh, Mesa Verde, we stopped in this little town, Mankiss. I think it was Mankiss. I think that's right, Mankiss. So after we got gas, then I kept noticing this kind of multicolored, hippie looking kind of grocery store co-op called Zuma. And I was like, James, do you mind if we stop? It's calling to me. I'm glad we went in. It was really cool. Everybody seemed really laid back and it was awesome. And I discovered a lovely local tea company called Southwest Tea Company. And, uh, and there's all the information back here. She is located at Mankiss, that's it. Mankiss, Colorado. So I have prepared Super C. And this is organic oat tops, organic rose hips, organic elderberry, organic cinnamon, organic lemongrass, organic hibiscus, organic burdock root, and organic licorice root. So there's no caffeine in this, but what a pack of vitamin C. And I don't know if you can see, but that's what the tea actually looks like. I was like, okay, I, I gotta try this. I've got to try this. And actually, oops, I didn't follow the instructions. It said, <laughs> let it steep for about 10 minutes. This actually steeped for about seven, eight minutes. So my apologies on that but it's probably no less delicious. So like I said, this is a cup of Super C by Southwest Tea Company and Mankiss, Colorado. Here we go. It's a beautiful color. I don't know if you saw it in the teapot, but here we go. Mm. 
So I think I put too little of the actual tisane in my teapot, but you can definitely smell the oat tops and a little bit of the rose hips. I wish y'all could see the, can y'all see that? Yeah, there you go. You can see what it looks like after being, oops, after being steeped. I'm dropping tea all over my desk. But the taste is, you know, I hate, the taste makes me think of this part of Colorado, honestly. Um, all right, so I'll t I'll, I've filmed a little, I actually tried some of this about uh, 15 minutes ago. And the first thought that came to my head was, this reminds me of our vacation in this part of Colorado. Like I, I didn't even try, it just, in fact, I took a picture of the bag of tea, like right outside the little co-op and it looked kind of cowboyish, you know, Southwestern Colorado. And that's exactly what appeared in my mind when I took that first sip. So the sip that you saw, that was my second sip, but no less delicious. Yeah, I'm getting the oat tops, definitely the rose hips. A little bit more of the hibiscus, but this is a very subdued tasting tea. Actually, I would much rather like this iced more so than hot. It's it's very it's quite good hot, but I really would like to make a picture of this. Ice it down, maybe put like some honey crystals in it or something and enjoy it that way. In my cup, I'm actually smelling the, what is that? That's the cinnamon, yeah. My cup actually is picking up the cinnamon. That's kind of cool. But this is quite delicious. I, I almost feel like I've been parched for hours and somebody hands me a cup of this and it's hot, but as I'm drinking it, I feel refreshed. And I feel like my soul has been replenished. I really do. This is quite good. This is, this is the kind of tea that I would drink knowing that I had several hours to kill. So I got myself one of my favorite books to read and I sat outside in our patio and I made it iced and I just, and I knew that I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to do anything. I just, hmm, I just wanted to relax and read. I'm getting all of that from the Super C. I know my body's like, oh, wow, she's giving us, you know, vitamin C, this is amazing. But yeah, I'm feeling just kind of chilled and groovy with this. Has a delicious blended taste, it really does. I was kind of worried that, you know, one ingredient was gonna stand out more so than the others, like the, the oat tops, but actually all the ingredients are playing well together. They really, really are. This is this is quite good. But yeah, I would like to try this iced with some honey crystals and just see if maybe it's quite different when it's iced, but I don't think I don't think it will be. Or I could be wrong. But no, this is this is quite lovely. And what a great way to remember Southwest Colorado. Quite good. So that's all what that's all that I have for today. Um, of course, wrapping it up with a breathing meditation. Please make sure that you have a glass of water or a cup of your favorite tea. And uh, we're just gonna breathe for a short period of time. So if you are ready, let's begin.
let's end this breathing meditation with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or allow your eyes to come into focus once more. And now let's enjoy a sip of water or tea. I'm still getting the image of the Southwest. I, I really am. Well, many thanks to the literary witches and Melis de Calangal, also to the lovely folks at Southwest Tea Company for their Super C Tea. That's really good stuff. That's, that's really good. And thanks to you guys for still watching these videos and watching all my mistakes and watching me butcher names but showing my love and passion for tea and books and strange and unusual things. Thank you so much. I truly do appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. Well, us, give me a thumbs up. I would love a thumbs up for this tea house. And uh, if you have any comments, if you, and I keep saying this and I really do mean it, if you are an author and you would like to get your book reviewed, an honest review, and I don't charge anything, please reach out to me. My email address is tgoddess74, and that's T-E-A, goddess74, at gmail.com. Same thing with if you have a tea company or if you make your own blends or, you know, just on the side for fun and you'd like an honest review. Again, reach out to me as well because I... I I want to connect with other people in terms of words, in terms of artwork, in terms of tea. It's all about the connection, baby. It's all about that. Oh, before I forget, big shout out to singer-songwriter Vienna Tang. I uh, attended one of her climate, ac climate change action workshops. She was here in town to do some concerts and then she uh, had this workshop for like two hours. Wow, absolutely incredible, very informative, very laid back, met some wonderful people. It's, it's amazing how we were all from different backgrounds, but we all shared this passion, this desire to change the world if we can, to make it better. Um, I'll probably talk about it a little bit more in the future video, or I may talk about it on my blog. And like I said, I will put my blog's website on the video and future videos as well. But yes, big thank you to Vienna Tang. I, I, it was wonderful to meet you, love your music, and I hope to see you really, really soon. And just like with all you guys out there, take care of yourself and each other. Raise your teacup high. And always remember that to drink tea is to enjoy life with the glare. <laughs> I will see y'all real soon. Bye for now.